Welcome back to Spiritually Speaking. Today, we're going to talk about energy vampires. Have you ever been around someone and after they left, you felt completely exhausted? Have you ever first met someone and thought, ugh, their energy just doesn't feel good to you? But you give them a chance anyway because, eh, maybe it was you. (laughs) It wasn't you. Listen to this podcast and I'm going to tell you all about how people can suck the energy right out of you, how people steal your energy, and how you can take it back. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. My goal is to teach you the elements of spirituality that will show you how to find your passion and purpose in life. I'm your host, Lisa Maria. So join me in another session of Spiritually Speaking. I'd like to welcome you to this webinar about energy vampires. We're so happy that you joined us and I really, really hope that this webinar helps you understand exactly how people can actually steal your energy without you even realizing it and without them even realizing it. Because most energy vampires, which is what we call them, energy vampires, is that they don't even realize that they're doing it because they have so much going on in their lives and they're just looking to vent. So when I speak of energy vampires, please don't mistake in the fact that I am you know, don't, don't think that I'm, I'm making it out like these energy vampires are bad people because most of the time, like I said, they don't even realize they're doing it. Okay. So let's begin. Let's first talk about energy vampires. And like I was just saying, energy vampires are those that unknowingly suck the positive energy from you when surrounded by them. They're the people that constantly complain and do nothing to change their circumstances from bad to good. They just want to vent, but after being around them, you feel drained, you feel tired, and then you feel in a bad mood. Well, what just happens? You feel great and you were just in a great mood. They just stole all your positive energy and left you with theirs. I call it energy dumping. Don't, like I said, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that everyone around you is a bad person, nor an energy vampire. And most people don't even realize that they're doing it. But you know exactly who I'm talking about. Okay, let me give you an example. You walk into a party, you meet someone, and the first impression or the first feeling you get is, oh, I don't like them at all. You don't know what it is, but you just feel like, ew, you know? Well, you're feeling the energy of that other person, and you're receiving a gut instinct that they're not good for your own energy. So later, during the party, you have a few drinks, you loosen up, you start talking to that same person, and you think, oh, wow, they're not so bad at all. You exchange phone numbers, and they call you. You know how it gets when you get a couple drinks in you, you know? (laughs) So you get together with that person, and all they do is complain. You feel drained and tired as you excuse yourself for yawning while while they're there. Then you just can't wait until they leave so you can lay down and take a nap. And as they leave, They thank you for listening to them and say, I feel so much better now that I, quote, let it all out, quote. (laughs) I just needed to vent. Again, some people just need to vent. But the thing is, and we, well, wait a second, let me correct myself. Some people need to vent and we can still be there for them, okay? Now, you know who you can be there for and who just wants to complain. You know what I mean? 
So, you know, use your own instincts on that. But we need to surround ourselves with light so we can protect our own energy from being sabotaged. Okay? So within that scenario, you had all the positive energy sucked right out of you. So if you remember your first instinct, your gut instinct that was back at the party was a sign to stay away. I know how this feels. I've done this more than once and had the energy sucked right out of me. But we have to learn to set boundaries. And that's the biggest thing. And surround ourselves with a light to protect our own energy. When we set boundaries, we have to learn to say no when we need to. Now, I'm not saying cut off your friends and don't help them with their problems. This is not what I mean at all. What I am saying is that we must protect our own garden of life from people that might might try to interrupt the commitments that we have made to ourselves. The first thing we have to do is learn to say no without feeling guilty and stop saying yes because we feel we have to do something and then hold resentment for it. You you can say no in a nice way and saying no is not being mean. It's respecting our own time, our own commitments. So let me give you another example. Did someone ever ask you to do them a favor and you're in the middle of doing something for yourself. They call and they ask you to do something right at that moment. You say, yes, of course I'll help you. As you roll your eyes and make a pouty face while you're talking to them on the phone. But as you're talking to them on the phone, you put on your happy voice. Like, oh no, it's not a problem at all. I'm happy to help. After you hang up the phone, you stomp your feet and grab your coat and whisper negative things out loud to yourself like, oh, like I have nothing better to do but take care of their chores. Or why do I have to take care of them? Don't they have any family? Or when am I going to finish what I need to do? (laughs) I know. I've done it. Your needs are just as important as anyone else's. And if you can't do something at that very moment for someone, but you seriously want to help that person, say something like this. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I'm in the middle of doing whatever you're doing. But if you want me to help you at this time, I'd be happy to help you. I almost guarantee that most likely they will decline and not ask you to do it later because they're so used to you doing it when they call. People get used to recruiting others to do what they need to do. Things that they need to learn to take responsibility for. Again, I'm not saying if your disabled neighbor needs help in an emergency situation to tell them, no, it has to wait. So please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm talking about those that are perfectly capable of doing things for themselves. But don't they don't want to make an effort. Just like we have to take responsibility for our own lives, so do they. Other people must start doing the same that you are doing and stay committed to fixing their own lives. If it's something that they don't know how to do, tell them you will show them how to do it so they do not need to count on you to do it for them. You are not their caretaker And you must realize that, yes, you can help a person to an extent, but you cannot help them change if they are not willing to do the work and change themselves. With that said, I'd like you to stop this recording and I'd like you to do the cord cutting meditation that's included in this unit. I'd like you to call on Archangel Michael to come in and assist you during this meditation and know that Archangel Michael is omnipresent which means he can be with multiple people at one time so never feel as if you're taking away healing from another person as I said before your needs are just as important as others and Archangel Michael is never too busy for anyone small or large 
Archangel Michael will always be there to protect and guide you. Now stop this recording and go do the cord cutting meditation using the crystal lighted sword. I'll see you back here soon.